<laughs> I think we're live. Let's just say we are. I, 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 I'm going to say we're live. I don't know. I think we're live. And if we're not live, then. You know what? Worst case, I'm talking to you. We're going to drink some wine. Oh, oh, we're live. That that was oh. definitely. That was OK. That was. Think we're live? Oh, you know what? There we go. <laughs> we're live. Happy we're Wine live. Wednesday. <laughs> Happy Wine Wednesday. <laughs> OK. Now. There we go. Hi guys, what's up? And and yes, people are coming in now. Hello everyone. <laughs> and a happy sparkling wine Wednesday to you all. Uh, I'm here. Vanessa Conlon is here. Hi. Hi. hi Maxwell, great to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. We are back again doing this for another week this is this is very exciting i wouldn't miss it honestly yeah. and um before we go too far i should say happy birthday oh thanks and a happy birthday to you thank you taurus <laughs> yeah we not we just not stubborn we, no we are not stubborn i'm not stubborn and i won't hear anything about that because it's exactly. not true Yes. Everyone else is just wrong. So Right. right. We're not stubborn. We're just always right. Yeah. <laughs> we have other Tauruses in the in the in the in the chat tonight. Um because yeah, Vanessa and I we were we were talking this week about how we're both Tauruses and uh you know we had to celebrate our birthdays you know, from home this year and how different that was, but still fun. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. We made yeah. the most of it. And we made the most of it. Yeah. And it's also uh oh yeah we got a bunch of tourists actually in the chat so we, we, we do yeah <laughs> um, well i think we're as a sign we're supposed to, and i don't honestly don't know that much about it but i think we're supposed to like have an appreciation for like beautiful things and i think wine is beautiful so that makes sense it's it's true it probably is a reason that we like this so much yes yeah yes. yeah so <laughs> we thought since we're you know both celebrating birthdays and um mm -hmm. We we would we would pop some bubbles because we got it we got a toast to <laughs> us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have yeah bubbles yeah. popped. So I'm I'm well. I love champagne. I love sparkling wine of all kinds. Um, I'm so excited, and we have two wines today to taste, and I think that they're going to be really interesting and fun to talk about because they're both sparkling wines. Uh, one is white, one is pink. Uh, one is made in the traditional method. One is made in what's called the Charmat method, which we can geek out about. Um, so there's just, there's like so much fun to be had and there's bubbles. So bubbles. what could be better? Um, oh, first, uh, thank you so yeah. much, Kira. Today is National Beverage Day. Is it National Beverage Day in, in Scotland? Is that, I don't think it's National Beverage Day here, but. but if it Not is, that it, I know of, but I'll take it. Yeah. Um, I have beverages, so. Yeah, we got them. Which one are we yeah. doing first? So I think we should do, you know, I, I kind of went back and forth on this, but I think I would like to start with the um, the Langlois Chateau. That's a great idea because I don't have the other one open right now. So. <laughs> Max, see, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So, so the two ones, just so people can see what we're going to taste Side by side, yes, we've got a, a, a white sparkling wine, a pink sparkling wine um, uh, from two different countries and made in two different ways. So so the first one, so this is called the Langlois Chateau. I'm going to pour Langlois. a little because that would be a crime. Langlois Chateau. Langlois. Um, not to have these delicious bubbles in my glass. While we're bubbles! But, um, so... So what, where I wanted to start with, well, first of all, where I should start is cheers. Great to see you. <laughs> Thank yes, you for having cheers. me back. So much fun, always. Um, but what I, what, where I wanted to start with this was um, like, what is this? Where is it from? And how is it made? Mm -hmm. So this is from the Loire Valley. So the Loire Valley is in France. So, you know, Northern part, cooler region, beautiful region. Have you ever been? Yes. Yes. 
it's like you can't turn a corner and then there's some like beautiful chateau and like the, the forest right. and the hills and the rivers and it's a beautiful yeah. like bucolic countryside of, of a region right it's not mm -hmm. um it's sort of spread out it's not like you know full of tasting rooms and it's it's very like farmland and, and yep. countryside and beautiful gorgeous uh, yeah so um so this is from the loire and um it's made in the what we call the traditional method so i know Maxwell, you and I have talked, we've, we've tasted champagne yeah. together before and talked a little bit about um, about what champagne is. And so mm -hmm. what this has in common with champagne is it's made in what we call the method, the traditional method or the champagne method. But what we learned or talked about in previous, you know, Wine Wednesday chats is it can't be called champagne if it's not from the region of champagne right. in France. Right. So even though this was made in a very similar way and that there have been two fermentations, the second of which happened in a bottle. Um, we can't call it champagne, right? So it's called what we call Cremant. So Cremant. it says here, Cremant de Loire. So literally Cremant is as, you know, sparkling wine, I mean the traditional method de yeah. Loire from the Loire Valley. Um, but Cremant is really made all over France. So you'll mm. see things like, um, Cremant d'Alsace, so from Alsace, or Cremant de Bourgogne, so Cremant from Burgundy, or okay. even from Bordeaux, um, from the Jura. So you'll see this Cremant de, meaning from, this is Cremant made in this region, and um, and the regions outside of Champagne. Okay. That so, makes sense to me. Okay. So, so it's made in the same way and that the second fermentation happens in the bottle. Um, but outside of Champagne, there can be different grape varieties that are used. So, you know, in Champagne, there are a couple like sort of rare outliers, but let's just stick to like the core, which yeah. is, you know, in Champagne, we're talking about Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Meunier. Um, but, and this has some of that in common because this does have Chardonnay in it, but it has two different varieties that you won't necessarily find in Champagne. One is Cabernet Franc, and the other is Chenin Blanc. Whoa. So, so Chenin, do you like Vouvray? Do you drink much Chenin Blanc or? No. So okay. I'm not, so, so it's familiar. So, so Chenin's sort of spiritual home is in the Loire Valley. So Chenin Blanc is a, is a white um, grape variety that has very high acidity. It can have a very sort of white floral lanolin, um, uh, sort of a red apple peel note to it mm -hmm. um and it, it has a little bit of a different texture um in that like it, it can almost have this sort of like waxiness to it in a way um or like hmm. yeah so it's got a very interesting textural note to it um so it, as a dry wine you'll see if you see a wine that says Vouvray, Vouvray. that is Chenin Blanc and again Chenin Blanc. France okay. can be annoying uh, especially to people who are are new to wine, because yeah. you're just expected to know that if it says Vouvray, then it's made from Chenin Blanc. But but so that's you know you'll, if you see a a, dry, a a still wine that says Vouvray, it's, it has Chenin Blanc in it. So that's okay. one of the varieties in here. Then we have Chardonnay, which we've you know talked about before, both in Champagne and in like in in still wines. But you know right. also a very high acid grape with tons of like citrus, apple, yeah. And then did you have, and then- Yeah, no, no, then then the next one. Okay, and then and this is where it gets interesting, I think, to talk about is that Cabernet Franc, because yeah. Cabernet Franc is is a red variety. It's a red wine, guys. Cabernet Franc is red. Right, this is a white wine. Yeah. But so, there's Cabernet Franc in this. There is Cabernet Franc in this, yes. So how does that happen? So, yeah. um. And this, you know, this this happens in other regions. I mean, same in, in Champagne that, you know, use of Pinot Noir, uh, for instance, or Meunier, those are red, those are red grapes too. But but you can make a white wine out of that. And the how you do that is um, we've talked in previous wine Wednesdays about tannins, mm. um, which are in the skins of, of of red varieties. It gives red wines the color, sort of the, the textural component to them. Um, but because they live in the skin if you press the juice off of the skins and then ferment the wine, uh, ferment the juice then off of the skins, you'll still have a, a white wine. Wow. So, you know, picture, picture it like, even if you have um, 
like a you know a cluster of of uh, red grapes at home just that you're snacking on you know if you if you bite it in half and you look at the flesh yeah. it's pale in color yes so it's the same thing with with winemaking so if you press the juice off quickly because if the juice lingers on the skins that's when you'll start to get a rosé wine and then the longer it's on the skins you'll get a, a red wine but if you press it very quickly off of the skins you can make a white wine from red grapes vanessa's blowing our mind <laughs> and i mean what <laughs> Did i have Wow. I haven't even had a sip of this wine. I've just been chit chatting. I, I get I, you can see how excited I am. <laughs> like, let's so drink. Like All right, having a drink. Mm. Delish. Um, so when I was talking before, okay, I get really excited about texture and yeah. the palate feel. Like the aside from what it tastes like or smells like, I I I really get excited about about that like how does it actually feel um and you remember like a couple of minutes ago um when i was talking about chenin blanc and that texture do you feel it has this kind of like it's almost like it coats your palate like some wines feel very slick and linear and this wine like it's not heavy it's no. not sweet and you know it's light bodied but it has this sort of like textural roundness to it this sort of do you get what i see with this sort of like almost like waxy feel to it and that comes from the inclusion of of that variety chenin blanc okay yeah because like it's feeling like um the juices are just lingering mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. my mouth what? yeah yeah so this and this is a very um I think this is a delicious, very high quality wine. So this is, as we, as we talked about, this is made in the Loire Valley, but this particular winery is actually owned by the house Bollinger in Champagne. So mm -hmm. they kind of bring, you know, this, this Champagne sensibility, this very like commitment to quality and um, that they would use in Champagne, but of course made, you know, outside of the region of Champagne. Um, and, and one other thing I should mention about Cremant is that, you know, there are, um, there are actual laws about wine, which I know sounds sort we, of weird. We but, mentioned it last week, yeah, that there are wine laws. So there are actual wine yeah. laws. Um, and, <laughs> and it depends, again, this is what can be sort of um, a little bit you know, frustrating or confusion or can seem intimidating at first if you don't have someone um, right. you trust or, or know where to learn about or read about it um, to, 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 to know these things because it's different by region. So it's not like right. I can just say, oh, this applies to all wines all over the world. But one of the, um, the wine, the, the laws that applies to, to sparkling wines is how long it's, it's matured on the lees. So wow. in the lees, we talked about in a previous session, right? So that's um, that's you know when when um, sort of cliff note fermentation. You have a grape. There's yeast, which just exists in nature, yeah. um, or you can inoculate with them. The yeasts eat the sugars in the grapes, and the byproducts are alcohol and CO2. So the CO2, you know, can just escape, or you can trap it in a bottle mm -hmm. to make a sparkling wine, and then the yeast. Those dead, they sort of sacrifice themselves to make this wine for us because as they they for they ferment the the sugars in the grape and form alcohol at a certain amount of alcohol they they die, and okay. so these yeasts have died. But when you keep them in contact with the wine for a short period up to a very long period, they can have an impact on the wine. So without going too far down a massive rabbit hole, <laughs> which I seem to have already gone down. <laughs> Um, you know, the second fermentation in the bottle and how long the wine spends in contact with those leaves, which are trapped in the bottle is, is a law. Okay. So That's depending law. on the region, you have to keep them in contact for a certain number of months. Does that make sense? Have I totally lost you? Am no, I that's fine. I okay. think it, it makes sense. You know, um, so if, if, if how are these laws by country? They are 
by country, but then they can vary by region within the country. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Just to make it super crystal clear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wine laws, everybody. Wine Let's, laws. Yeah. Yes. You can spend your life studying them, but you don't have to because I've just already done that. So just, you know, happy to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to which, 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 you know, uh, is it, is it, is it uh, a question that we had? Oh. Um, this question was actually from Erica. Um, and Thank you, Erica. Yeah. Thanks, Erica. Uh, she actually wanted to know, you know, how long did you have to study for Ooh, to get question. to where you are now? Um, that, that, yeah. Okay. A master That's a good of wine, by the way, guys. If, if you've not seen Vanessa before, Vanessa is a master of wine. Um, so the question was, you know, how, how long did you study to get that? Um, a long time is the answer. But um, so essentially the, the master of wine is... Um, about as far as you can go if you want to be a geek so mm -hmm. it's it's the highest credential you can you can achieve in in the wine industry and so leading up to that i had already done you know probably seven years of other study um to even be able to apply so so even to apply to the master of wine you have to prove that you've already done all this other education that you've worked in the wine industry you have to get recommended in by a, a, an existing master of wine and then you have to take an exam before you're even accepted in the program. So, um, so a long time is the answer. <laughs> a long time. You can, you know, and, and, and people can come from, you know, I had always uh, been in sort of the more, um, you know, educational or sales or marketing side of wines. You know, I've worked at wineries, but um, you can come from all different sides of the industry. Some people have already, you know, had a degree in enology or, you know, winemaking, um, and then they can use that to apply. But essentially you have to have already earned other credentials proven that you've kind of gotten as far as you can without this credential right? to continue. Okay, so there's no exact number of years, but a, a, a long time. A long time. <laughs> a long time. A long time. A lot, a, a lot of learning and, and knowledge <laughs> along the way and, 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 a, and, a, and, a, and a, you know, crazy obsession with the, the <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might call it a crazy obsession, but at least I get to drink wine. Yeah. I, and call I mean, it studying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like, that's like, you know, me, when I go to Disneyland, that is, that is, you know, I've, you know, I took my crazy obsession hey. and I turned it into work too. It's just kind of, I get it, you know, I get it. So, you know. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, my goodness, I couldn't answer a, a, a fraction of what you can, you know, so much mm -hmm. um, and you've, you know, I won't call it obsessive, but you you find it interesting, so you've spent time on it. Yeah, it's fine. Just we'll, say that. We'll, we'll go with that. Right, we'll just we'll leave go it with that. that. But we okay. love this because we are all learning so much from you during this, and it's just uh, I I it, it, I know we're getting comments here that people's minds have been blown. <laughs> so thank you. Oh really. no, it's, it's it's fun. It's fun. Do you? I I really love this wine. Do you? I think it's do you like. So, and it's also, I might add, um, Cremant can be a nice, lesser expensive way to enjoy traditional method sparkling wine because champagne usually has a bit of a higher price tag. Um, and this is yeah, a way this... to enjoy the champagne method made from outside of champagne for, uh, you know, a, usually sometimes half as much. It's a fraction of the cost because this mm -hmm. one's 20 on wine access. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah, this is twenty bucks on wine access, and it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing, you know. Like I had the champagne, we did a champagne, uh, you yes. know, uh, like an actual real, you know, champagne, champagne from yep. champagne. From champagne. Yep. That was, I think, that was like thirty five. But you know what? Like this one is every bit as good. Yeah. So absolutely, and and even thirty five for actual that's, champagne true champagne is on the lower oh. that's uh, yeah on the lower end you can spend you know yeah. hundreds and hundreds of dollars up to a, you know four figures if you want to but anyway, anyway i love yeah. this wine it's awesome um and and guys if you are um looking for it the uh the wine access link yes. I, I will i i will i will paste it in the in the video how about that you cool. don't Cool. <laughs> All right. I think I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. So, so this is a wine. Um, this That's is a sparkling open. wine. 
um, from Italy. So, so this is called Lavinia di Alice. So it's like Alice, what we'd say, but in Italian, Alice, like Alice in Wonderland. That's, that's I, yes, I, I was saying Alice, of course. So it's Alice. Because we're in Italy. Um, so Lavinia, the wine di Alice means the, the wine of Alice. Um, and so this is a, this is obviously pink. So this is a, um, a wine that's made in a, a, a different method than the previous. And this is one of the reasons why I thought it, it would be, it would be fun to, to contrast. So you got that? Oh, good. All right. Done. All right. <laughs> Both eyes intact. <laughs> Okay, so so this is from the Veneto uh, in northern Italy, um, and Italy. so this is made in in um, a, a, a different method. What we can call charmat, or to keep it simple, we can just call it tank. So let's start with like what these have in common. Mm, okay. What they both have in common is they're sparkling. Uh, yep. What they both have in common is that they've gone through two fermentations. So. One fermentation is if you would just make a still wine, you know, bottle it, drink it, mm -hmm. uh, still. But then there's a second fermentation. So the first one that happened, the second fermentation happened in the bottle. And that's when we call the traditional method or the champagne method or the method traditional. The second fermentation for this wine happened in a tank. Um, okay. So now what does that like, so why does that matter? Well. Yeah. When we were talking before about the lees or those, I know it sounds gross, but the, the dead yeast cells, but don't be afraid of them because they actually make really, right. they add complexity and texture and, and, and interest to, to traditional methods of working wines. You want that with some wines. Um, with this wine, the intention was really just to keep the fruitiness as, as the most important part. So okay. this wine was not aged for any kind of length on the lees. Uh, so, so this, it, and, and instead of the second fermentation happening in the bottle, like with this one, the second fermentation happened in a big tank. Big tank. So, or you could do a small tank or a medium sized tank, but it didn't happen in a bottle. Okay. Is the point. So, so then you can still bottle it under pressure. You keep, you know, you keep the bubbles in the wine, but it's a different, um, the, the impact on the glass is that well, this one will have some some impact from that 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 the leaves, what we call autolysis or leaves autolysis. Don't worry about it. You don't have to pronounce it or spell it. Um, this one won't. Okay. So this one is going to be really focused on like what is the fruit in the glass, and the bubbles are gonna are gonna be a little bit different. So when you have the traditional method in the bottle, you tend to end up with like a finer. We call it the mousse, or you know, when you actually just look at the bubbles in the glass, the sort of persistence yeah. um, that they have, they're finer in nature. These are going to be a little bit sort of fuller and quicker to dissipate, and that's because these didn't. Um, this was this yeah. was the second fermentation was was in the tank instead of the bottle. So that makes sense. I'm I'm like you. You thought I was a geek before. I'm like way out there tonight. <laughs> yes. What do we think, guys? Vanessa, out there tonight, or is are we following? Too, are we following along time? with this? I'm, I'm following. So I, I you know, okay. cool. All right, let's try. It. Yeah, might as well try it. Whoa. So, I mean, I, I, I'd love to hear your, but like right off, off the bat, like there's much more fruit to this, right? It's like much more forward, just kind of cherry and strawberry and raspberry and I love this mm -hmm. okay it's kind of um, i i absolutely love this now this is so fascinating to me you know looking at um looking at this bottle and and the color you you would think oh that's gonna be a very sweet um you know but no no, no. this it's is uh, my mom, mom's here. Mom is watching. Mom, you mom. would love this. <laughs> like this is what we we gotta have some of this at Christmas. This for yeah. like our cheers because this is we always do prosecco. Um, mm -hmm. We always do prosecco. Uh, you know, at Christmas with the family when we start, we do a little cheers, um, little toast. But but this is a great option. Yes. 
Yes. It's not sweet. Like you said, you're exactly right. But there's a lot of fruitiness to it. So much fruit. I so, and, and, and I think that's what makes this, it would make this one really easy. I mean, it's, it's really easy just to drink on its own, but it would, it would make it um, fun to pair with like a little bit of spicy food. Cause it can kind of stand up to it. Cause it's got that, that fruitiness, but I kind of love that you said that you drink Prosecco because one of the things I want to talk about with this wine, and it goes back to wine laws, and it won't go down a huge rabbit hole, just a little rabbit hole. <laughs> wine <laughs> laws, all right. Is this is from the same region where Prosecco is made, but legally you can't make rosé Prosecco. You can make rosé from the same region where Prosecco is made, but you can't call it Prosecco. So this is essentially, it's essentially rosé prosecco, yeah. but they can't put prosecco on the label because as of now, it's not allowed. It's legal. We're drinking illegal wine. Right? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Don't tell. <laughs> so okay, For, okay. So then, how much of the like? How, how did they get this color? Um, okay. how, how much of this is yeah. prosecco? And so, so prosecco is um. It's a type of wine, it's, it, as it's mentioned from, from the Veneto, but the, the variety that they use to make Prosecco is called Glera, um, G-L-E-R-A. -E um, this has about 10% of another variety blended in called Marzamino. And that's why this is illegal because you can't, I mean, illegal. Right. It's legal, you can't call it Prosecco, but that's not a variety that's technically allowed in the, um, in the region. So. So if you want to, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pronounce some Italian here. But um, the 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 governing body, or to be part of that, what we call the DOC or the Denominazione di or Origine Controllata. Don't try to yep. say that three times fast. That was beautiful. Um, <laughs> you cannot have this variety to be prosecco. So mm -hmm. that's why it's not allowed. So, but Marzmino's in this, and and this is actually a variety that um, Mozart wrote about. Yes. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Dad. So, now my dad's watching too. My dad is a musician. So this is <gasps> right up his alley now. This is Mozart wrote about the. Okay. Okay. Maxwell's dad. I'm also a, a former musician. Um, so we should talk sometime like offline um, okay. or online. But, um, but Mozart actually uh, in the opera Don Giovanni, he talks about this is a delicious Marzamino. It's one of the, the, the lyrics. So I feel like we're almost like Mozart, basically. Oh yeah. I, I mean, do. obviously. Um, I, I am, I am. <laughs> okay, this was in Don Giovanni? Mm-hmm, yes. Okay. This is, yes. Okay. One of Mozart's great operas, yes. if I may. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's yeah. You know, I, I, I used to, I used to, I used to actually be really good on piano. My dad, my dad taught me. Mm. Of course, I was, I was really good back in the day. Like I, 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 I still have a keyboard here, and you know, I still, I still sing and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I was, I, you know, I was good back in the day. I, 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 my parents made me play the piano. I love music, um, but I did not love playing the piano, and. I feel like we might have this in common. It was too like solitary for me. Like I wanted to Have like to. talk to people and like interact. And I don't know if that's how you yeah. felt, but you know, I love the piano, but I was like, I don't want to sit here by myself anymore. I kind of feel like I should be, you know, cheering. And you are <laughs> with a ton of wine behind you. <laughs> that's your, I mean, I don't you know, <laughs> wine is your piano. I love that. Thank you. Look at that. Yeah. You are all like it took, <laughs> All it took from, yeah, all it took for me to come up with that quote was, was drink some wine that Mozart talked about. So it's good. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to steal that and use that, but that's, that's great. But um, yeah. anyway, these are, those are, those are the wines I, you know, I wanted to chit chat about tonight. I hope this was fun. This was awesome. You know, I, I, um, so, you know, I'm just gonna do a little. I, I think I will too. Yeah. I really like both of them. You know, I did a little poll on my Instagram earlier. I asked oh. them, I asked people what they thought, uh, which one I would like better. Yes. And 
I think people said, you know what, let me look. <laughs> let me see what people wrote. Okay. Which one, which one will I like better? Ooh, what'd they say? Yeah. Oh. Uh, everyone they thought, thought I would better. like the it's Italy one day. better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I can honestly say I do like this better. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Especially because as you mentioned, um, your family, you like to start with some Prosecco. So this probably has sort of a familiarity to it in a way. But like, but this is really delicious too. Different. That's what's great about wine, right? And yeah, and then, and and you you like you can't go wrong with either of them. Whoa! But you know what? I just had the one, the one from France here, and my mouth just watering like crazy in a mm -hmm. way that the, mm -hmm. in a way that the, uh, the prosecco that's not a prosecco did not do. Yeah. So, I do think, I think you're spot on actually. You have a great palate. Um, that, Cause I do think that the Cremant has a higher acidity to it. They're both really fresh and lively and, you know, kind of make me want to have another sip. And, but, but I do think that the Cremant de Loire has slightly higher. We've talked about this kind of scale of acidity, right? And yeah. I think this is leaning towards the higher. And I would call that, we're just going to call this Spumante, which just means sparkling wine from Italy since we can't call it Prosecco. But I think it, that's this one's kind of more down the middle. Like I call it like medium, medium. Yes. Okay. This it's just so fascinating. I love this. And and thank you for saying I have a, a good palate. That, that that means a lot coming from you. Let me just say. <laughs> well, so we've tasted a number of times together, and you always have very astute and accurate observations about the wine, which can, <laughs> which can um, only improve by tasting more wine. So. <laughs> oh no, I guess I have to taste more wine, Vanessa. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wah, wah. I have to taste more wine. <laughs> um, do you guys at home, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, someone said, was that, um, someone I saw in a comment here. Tiffany, you got, Tiffany, you got a bottle of the uh, Lang, 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 Lang. You, you, you got one and it, and it came today or yesterday? Are you having it right now? Because that's awesome. Well, cheers um, if you are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, uh, put them in the chat. Um, and I know I want to get to this other question that uh, Anna B. Anna B's here. Um, she wanted to know how long can you store a wine like this? How long do they stay fresh? Um, mm -hmm. best practices in storing your sparkling after great you, question after you open it great question so so um with all wines the key is to keep them as limited to oxygen exposure as you can yep. um, and to keep them cool so even a red wine that i've opened if i'm not going to finish it i'll put it in the refrigerator because things, um, they mature faster, mm -hmm. the higher the temperature. So let's say it was a red wine, obviously I'm gonna wanna drink it, not right out of the fridge, but if I'm gonna save it, I would put it in the refrigerator you know, overnight and then pull it out a little bit in advance, let it warm up a bit before I drink it. So you wanna keep them cool um, and you wanna keep you know, as much oxygen out. So you can see like, you know, if you just, the, the thing about a sparkling wine is you, you can't get the cork back in, right? So, because it, yeah, it expands. So, so what you can do is you can use, um, so I have my little show and tell, so it's called a Bouchon. And so you basically just can do that. And that's going to keep that, you know, keep this nice and airtight. If Perfect. you don't have a Bouchon, if you, let's say, save a cork from a bottle of um, still wine that you have, okay, you can just put that right in the top of this and shove it in the fridge. Um, some people have those, you'll see like the stoppers where it kind of, you know, sucks, tries to suck the air out of it or, you know, yeah. make it as airtight as possible. But honestly, I don't even use that. I just, I just, use I, I, I use a, either a Bouchon. If I don't have a Bouchon, I'll just find a cork from a, from a, another bottle of wine and put that in, put it in the fridge. Okay. What do you think about, um, uh, let me get let me get one of uh, let me get my oh, thing here because okay. I I I, I want to ask now that we're on this subject. <laughs> okay, like um, I want to ask you guys. Okay, okay. Uh, what do you think about um, the Cremant de Loire? 
Let me get some tools that I've. We're gonna find out what he's talking okay. about. Okay. Okay. So okay. What is that? So what what do we think about this guy? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. That's what that's what I what I was talking about. Yeah. So you can use that. It kind of like pulls. Yeah, it's supposed to like put the stopper in, keep it nice and airtight, right? Totally. So you can use that, but this is great. Okay. Because this is don't it, have that. It's this yep. thing. That's exactly what I was. Yes. Perfect. That's okay. exactly so what I was. This is a real yeah. great tool. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Again, oxygen temperature. So um, one of these guys would be really, really good, for mm -hmm. sure. And then, yeah. Okay. That's, that's that's good. Okay. Good question, uh, guys. Yeah. I love that. And and what about what about this tool? What is the do you do these do any the aerator aerator um yes so um yes they can so so essentially um oxygen is a friend and a photo wine and uh was we were talking about if you want to keep the wine fresh you know you you want to keep it away from oxygen um let's say you have like a very young wine um sometimes they're really like picture a teenager. They're kind of like angsty and like they have issues and they're kind of like, leave me alone. I'm not, yeah. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Um, and, and so in those cases, sometimes a little bit of oxygen, it's like, chill out, bud, you're good. So like it, it actually sort of opens up the wine. It makes it more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those are great for that. That's when I would use those. The other thing you can do you know, like say like a young bottle of Napa Cab, like they will sort of evolve and mature and get sort of mellow and harmonious over time. But sometimes you just want to drink them when they're sort of a younger vintage. And that's when it's great because it kind of opens them up. It makes them a little bit easier to drink in their youth. So the other thing you can do, if you don't have an aerator, is just put it in the glass and do a good, do, 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 just swirl it around. Open it up. <laughs> right, exactly. Which is which is what we do all the time, and you get it just fills the entire room with the with the. It does. It does. It, it does. It, that's that's it's a bonus. But yeah, the so so that's the thing. Like when, uh, like all things with wine, it depends, right? So young wine, some wines you want to be like, let's open this up, let's get a lot of air in it, and then sometimes you're like, I want to keep this, no oxygen. So it sort of depends on what the intent is. Got it. It's really good. Okay. It's good to know. I love this. So yeah. how long, okay, here's a question then. It, um, how long, uh, okay, how long does it keep before it doesn't taste so oh. bubbly? Okay, so okay. how long? Okay, so good question. So so the other thing, something like a, like a bouchon or, or even just put a cork in it, like it will, the, the bubbles will persist for, you know, a, a day or two days and then it'll basically it'll turn into a flat wine or a still wine but the thing is as long as you've kept it well if it's been stored in the refrigerator um you can still enjoy it it won't be bubbly anymore but it will just taste like a very nice still wine um but i'd say you know depending on the quality of the wine you know after a couple days it's going to start to fade a little bit sometimes it'll lose its sort of freshness on the nose first, but it'll still taste good. And then after a couple of days, it'll start to sort of just taste a little flat uh, as well. So, okay. you know, invite a friend of, well, we can't do that right now, but um, you know, when we can invite a friend over and finish it. <laughs> invite a friend over whenever we can. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me just oh no, this is not good. Oh, I know, no, it's just part of <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> or just use a bouchon. Sorry, I mentioned right. it. Bouchon. Use a bouchon. Same yeah. Thing. Same thing. Um, hold on, there's another <laughs> question here. Uh, do does okay, Samantha wants to know. Samantha. Does thicker legs on the wine mean more alcohol percent or less? We've heard two different things. Okay. It's a good question. So so, and let me just back up. So by legs, legs, what people mean is, so if you swirl the wine around and you watch, like, it's a little hard to see, obviously, over over yeah. Zoom or YouTube, but um, these these droplets that sort of start to fall and it's, it's harder to, 
these don't have much because this is a sparkling wine. It's very yeah, light body. But I like, let's one. pretend. Let's pretend we had a red wine in the glass. You we'll would be able to see. red. We'll do this with a red. You know, next time. Maybe You'll be fun. right. Well, so we'll we'll do show until next time. But but basically, you know, you can see them. Sometimes they're thin and fast to fall, and sometimes they're sort of thicker and slower to fall. And it it can't tell you anything about what the wine is, what it tastes like, what the quality level is. Um, but what it can tell you is, so you're you're part you're 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 partly right with the question is, wines that are higher in alcohol or viscosity or have some residual sugar in them, mm -hmm. will have legs that are slower to form and slower to fall. Um, the thing that it, it is complicated is that um, it can also vary based on how clean your glass is. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So there's your answer, guys. Okay. So, like all things with wine, it depends. It, it's, a little, it's a little murky. It okay. Yes. Yeah. But 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 that is true. Like generally wines that are higher in alcohol and or sugar will have thicker legs, but it's not gonna but beyond that, it can't really tell you much. Um and again, if your glass isn't completely squeaky clean, it can still look like they're thicker legs are slower to form and fall when it might just be the, you know, yeah, how your wine is cleaned. <laughs> okay, cool. Good answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have another one for you. Okay. Um, if someone is getting into wine, is a mm -hmm. decanter important? So great question. So um, uh, yes and no. Um, it depends. Uh, <laughs> So, so what a decanter can do is two things. So you can use it um, for a young wine, like we were talking about before with your with your aerator, right? So the point of that is to get air into into the wine to mm -hmm. open it up. So a decanter, um, I wish I had one to show, you, but uh, we'll do show until next week. But um, basically, uh, the decanter you can use to get some some air into the wine really fast. So it's like you kind of want to beat the wine up a little bit, like maybe even like let it splash a little bit in there and maybe even like stir it around. Um, let's see if I can, my, maybe one of my cats will bring me a decanter. Um, look at that, I've trained them so well. Here we go. Thanks. Um, <laughs> amazing. So, so what you can do with a decanter, let's say, you know, it's a young wine, you want to pour it in, you kind of let it, you know, really like aerate it, like, uh, get some oxygen in there. And then what that can do is like open it up. It's like we were talking about before, like a young wine can be kind of like closed and tight and be like, I don't want to show you anything about myself yet. Cause I'm just, I'm not ready. Right. So sometimes you're like, it's cool. Come out of your skin. You know, we're, we're, we're all in this together. So you kind of beat it up. It opens up the wine. It makes it more enjoyable uh, in its youth. The other thing a decanter can be used for is very mature wines. So, um, and generally we're obviously talking about red wines um, because red wines, as they age, they start to precipitate the tannins. So we were talking about the tannins that come from the skins of the red grapes, it gives the wines, red wines, their color, their structure. As they get older, they start to fall out of the wine. So red wines, as they get older, they actually get lighter in color. Um, and okay. sometimes at the bottom of the bottle, I don't have a red one in front of me, but um, yeah. uh, they'll start to form at the bottom of the bottle, you'll see what we call sediment. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, little fine grained sandy, oh, yeah. um, and, and that's the sediment of, a, of, a, of an older red wine. And so- It's always interesting when you have with, an old red wine, that color too, I, it's so, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're, they're captivating. Yeah. Um, but you don't necessarily always want all that sediment dissolved in your wine. So the other use for a decanter, let's say this was a, well, this is an 05. It's actually, I've had this bottle recently and it does have sediment. So ideally what I would do would be, um, I've been storing it on its side because you want the wine to touch the cork so it doesn't dry out. But if I wanted to serve this wine, I would you know, stand it up for let's say 24 hours. So that sediment's gonna settle to the bottom. Mm. And I'll do, you know what, next week I'll do this with the red wine. We can, we can do this live, but uh, basically, you know, then what you would do, you open it and then you decant it. So you, they used to do this over a candle. So you could see when in the neck of the bottle, as you pour it, 
you start to see the sediment gather here and then you would stop so that you just maybe have a small amount of wine in the bottom that you don't pour that has the sediment in it. And then your decanter has the wine without the sediment. And so that's how you would use it on a mature wine. <laughs> so to answer your question, yes, it can be useful. Is it absolutely necessary, especially if you're getting into wine and you don't have mature bottles that are gonna have sediment? No, you don't have to have one. Um, if you wanna, if you, you know, hey, you're on the fly, you're like, hey, I think this wine needs to like open up a little bit. Just do that. Okay. Cool. Aerate it. That's yeah. Good. Okay. Good answer, guys. I think that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. I, I, I like so. it. You know. You know. All right. I, 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 do you have time for one more question or are we, are we done? For you, of course. Um, how do you, uh, this is an interesting question. I don't know if you have a good answer for this one, but it's, um, how can you find quality wines or wineries, but try to be unique? So like, how do you tell a low quality from a high quality? So I, uh, or just, just, yeah. How, yeah, I guess for a basic, someone that's just getting into it, how do you know something's good? I, th I think that's a good way to put it. Okay, it's such a good question. We could spend like a whole hour on this, um, which I won't do. Um, but we could another time. Um, so essentially if you're, if you're just, okay, the short answer is if you're yeah. just getting into wine, find somebody that you trust. I didn't mean to make this the wine access pitch, but that's why we're here, right? Well, like we, that's you know, the thing that you guys yeah. do so well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Is we, we have a, yes, thank you. We have a team of people that, you know, we've devoted our lives to this. So we put our endorsement behind it. We taste the wine first. We tell you what we think. We're not going to offer it if we don't love it. Um, so that's the easy answer is find someone you trust, you know? I, yeah, that's, I, I think that's the best answer possible too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It really is the best answer possible because like, it, it, I, I, that's how I've learned about wine is just you talk to other people, but then you, 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 you learn from experts like yourself, like, oh, I like guys, like I wouldn't talk about wine access as much as I do. Um, if I didn't like the wine, you know, like I, I would have been like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like legit every single wine that I've had from wine access is really good like it's not just like oh that was good it's always like whoa whoa yeah um, well we're, we take it very seriously i mean we taste everything like we never everything is like you know we we have to like put our personal endorsement behind it and like our reputation as wine professionals and say like i've tasted this i vouch for it it's great yeah and and like so like because you know disney fans here he uh, just wrote um i've had excellent cheap wines and terrible expensive wines exactly yes uh, exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah you can, uh, yes and 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 that's like you know obviously there are there are some things where you know some wines have a certain amount of investment in them and it can it can show itself in the glass and sometimes you have a uh, an, an expensive wine where you're like, ah, oh, it wasn't that great. Or you have a, yeah, your little, you know, $10 bottle of whatever. And you're like, that was outstanding. And that's why, yeah. It, I mean, the shorter answer is find someone you trust as you're learning. Of course, if you want to keep learning and become a total dork like me, then you can do a, you can keep <laughs> studying and take classes and read and listen to podcasts and all that, all that stuff. But all that I, mean, stuff. I mean, I'm going to start doing that, you know, I was, uh, I, I, I feel like I need to take some classes now too. I mean, we get an education from you every week, but I, I was like looking into like, you know, some, like some classes and things. Cause why not? Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, yeah. coming from me, obviously I'm a little biased, but I think it's, I think it's fascinating. It gets me excited every day, so. <laughs> um, This was awesome. Okay. okay. You know what? Okay, Shauna had a really good question here. I don't know what we're doing next week, but Shauna wrote, what type of wine decided. Yeah, what type of wine should I have for next week so I can drink the same as what you're sampling? Okay. Um, Let's decide that. Vanessa, Offline. Yeah. Vanessa and I are going to figure that out. And I will. Uh, we can post I, them. Yeah. Can post it. 
I'll post yeah. it on my uh, Instagram story, uh, Shauna, so you can go check that out and everyone else that's interested in. And then if they order it, you know, soon, they'll have it in time for next week, easy. Yeah. So, yeah. So if we post it, you know, tomorrow, you have plenty of time. Yeah, because Winax has got a lot of stuff actually in stock right now. It's really good. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Cool. All right. I love this is it. so much fun. Am I am I like geeking out too much? You can you can be straight with me. No, I don't think you're geeking out too okay. much. I think I, okay. I, I, You'll tell me, right? Like if you if I'm, if I'm ever just like, you know, just just talking to myself, you can be like, chill out. It's cool. Just be like, okay. calm down, Vanessa. You're gonna be like, I, take it down a notch. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just, well, you know, or okay. I could just be like I'm just gonna sit here and 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 drink while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> No, but cool. we actually have people that are. But uh, Vanessa is amazing. From, from oh. <laughs> um, you guys are perfect. I need science like right now. I love this. This is all interesting. I wouldn't mind taking classes. Um, it isn't too. No, this is good. I, mean, I everything is everything is good here. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm glad to hear it. I think I think everyone's loving. Um, you know, getting to learn you know, with, with you. Oh, my buddy RJ's here. What's up, RJ? RJ, RJ loves this too, by the way. So. Oh, thanks, RJ. Tiffany cool. said, thank you so much, Vanessa. So you're doing great. We love you. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. All right. Um, thank you. Great to see you, as always. And I'm excited to be back with you next week. So we'll figure out the wines. Can't wait. Same place, same time next week. Yeah. We're gonna do that, uh, and a, and another cheers to our our, our cheers. birthdays. Cheers. Um, Happy birthday! Cheers to uh, all of our nurses because it's Nurses Day. Oh yes! Cheers and thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, thanks, Vanessa. And uh, thanks, uh, guys, I will hang out for um, just a little bit more with the rest of you, oh, Vanessa. Right. Stop now. I'll hang out for a few more I'm minutes. I'm going to hop, but I'll see you next week. Can't Thanks. wait. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, she's awesome, man. That is like, I can't believe the amount of things that we learn every single week from her. It's kind of insane. Like, isn't that nuts? And it's just insane to me. I, I, I feel like <laughs> she is, yeah. So um, that was uh, that was pretty amazing, right? I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that too, because I, 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 you know, I can talk to her like that for you know hours, but I, you know, I also don't want to bore you with that for hours. But I think it was, I think you guys really, uh, yeah. Right, Erica? Seven years of studying. Yeah. That was a good question, though, Erica. Seven years of studying. And and then you still have to be like, even just to take the test to be the master of wine, you have to like <laughs> be accepted into that. It, it's it's uh, it's so cool. I think the 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 knowledge is just, yeah, yeah, that's wild and these um honestly were so good and really quite different like i was telling you guys you know like this one <clears throat> juicy okay and then you, you know this one my prosecco fans yeah um both of them are delicious and i highly recommend either of them um like yeah uh so here's what we're gonna do hang tight um i love this you saved your wine from dinner and to enjoy it right now with all us i love that disney fans that's so cool yeah rj you rj you're gonna love like either of these <laughs> like seriously <laughs> Yeah, Michelle, Prosecco, yum indeed. Thank you, Tiffany. So which wine 
are you, oh, Tiffany, you're having the one that I had last week? That's so cool. That's amazing. Oh, and you got, you got, Tiffany, you got this one because Vanessa recommended it on the site. That's what's so cool, actually. You can go to, um, you can go to Wine Access and see the recommendations that Vanessa has or any of their other experts. They're all listed. Like you can, you can shop by expert, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Here, let me put this in the thing again. <clears throat> There's the link if you want to go check it out. But I think that's one of the best things about it. Um, okay. Let me... Uh, Room temp and chill, both. Yeah, that was last week's wine where we where I I was like, oh wow, this is really good when it was chilled. It was red. Yeah. Um, we're just gonna do a quick little restroom break for myself, and I will be back in you know thirty seconds. Um, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll just chat for a little bit more. Does that sound good, guys? Good. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Okay, hi, what's up? How's it going? You guys, what are you talking about? Did I miss anything? What? <laughs> I never know what's gonna happen when I, when I leave you guys alone. I don't know. I just gotta, I just have, so what, what I have here is this, and I'm gonna, mm -hmm. okay. We love it. I love it. I love when I leave you guys because you're all good. You can just talk amongst yourselves very, very nicely. It's good. Um. Okay. I think what what, what, what we want to do is do we want to go to the 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 patio again? Do we want to go? Do we want to take a little stroll to the patio? Like we 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 did. You know, we, we like when we go outside, don't we? The question is. Which one do I want to take to the patio? Do we want to take the, do we want to go France or Italy on the patio? <laughs> which, which one do we want to do? Pink, Kaylee? Pink set, okay, okay. Oh, oh, Alice, a lot. It seems like, oh boy, Italy or France, it seems like, well, oh, what I'm seeing is uh, Italy is going to win this one, it looks like. <clears throat> so let me, <laughs> Rosa Regale, you know what's really interesting? So let me just pour this. Um, it's funny you said Rosa Regale, which is a, a very familiar one to us Disney people because they sell that obviously in, in uh, Epcot and, and uh, in California Adventure. Um, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to put these in the in the fridge too to cool them down because they've been sitting out here for a bit too. So let's let's do that. But the, the very interesting thing about the Rosa Regale is that's a very sweet one that has a very similar color to this. So that's like a sweet, you know, very sweet one that has a very similar color. Um, but this is not sweet at all. So it's, it's just an interesting thing. <clears throat> but I just want to chill these so I can return to them uh, in a 
in a little bit, you know. Okay. <clears throat> and now, let us venture to the world of outdoors. Okay. Okay. This. Oh, hey, Mickey. Okay. <laughs> ah, forgot, oh, man, <laughs> I forgot to get my little flip-flops. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. Um, uh, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, look at that sky. That is good. Okay. So, so this is great. This is awesome, by the way. Um, Oh, I love this. Italy on the balcony, Shauna. You are so right. <laughs> okay, Tiffany, I see what you said here. I'm trying to imagine the taste. I love Prosecco, but I'm not a huge fan of Rosé. Okay. It, it's, it is... It's definitely more, it's tricky, man. Think about a Prosecco, you know, a dry Prosecco, but you do throw some fruits in this. Still really dry, it is not sweet at all, but you're throwing some fruit in here that is making it not Prosecco. So and that, this is a really fascinating, really fascinating wine. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, what do I think about Shanghai opening, Didi? Uh, great. Gives us a little roadmap for what the future may hold for us. And I think that it'll be very interesting to see, you know? Um, yeah, uh, Kaylee, you know what? I literally, I love this. Popcorn and wine is your favorite. I literally have popcorn. It's like sitting right there. And that's kind of, I had like a, I had like a, the popcorn was sitting on the table as I'm drinking the wine and I wanted to eat it. And then I just like forgot, I got too lost in Vanessa's <laughs> teaching. <laughs> I just was like, ah. <clears throat> Man. Man. Um, yeah, Tiffany, dry, all you need to hear, super dry. Like, oh, Zara, hey, hi. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. You want some, Zara wants some, some swirl happening, some swirl action. Oh, man. Oh, did you see the bird going by too? Is she, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> Who saw the bird going by? Did anyone get that? Did anyone get that? Um, anyone get a picture of that? Because that was. Oh, should we do our our usual? Um, 
Should we do our, it wasn't the owl. <laughs> Should we do our usual um, cheers picture, guys? Could we do that for our Wine Wednesday cheers picture? Okay, where we can all cheers together. All right, ready? Here we go. And cheers. Taking our virtual cheers picture together. We love when we do this. Cheers. Thanks for being here, guys. You are awesome. Oh, RJ, RJ with the song in it. Birds flying high. <laughs> all right, I see you guys. I know you're all like, <clears throat> uh, ching ching, thanks for coming. What's up, Corey? <laughs> Champagne and chips. Oh, man. See, now I really need some popcorn. Okay, but what you guys don't know, or what I'm going to tell you right now, is that I, I got some Chick fil A coming is on the way and is going to be here real soon and yeah so i'm like trying not to spoil that but also kaylee with the popcorn idea got me going oh man oh thank you anna cheers to you anna b Anna was such a good question tonight too right about storing our our, our wines and how long it takes you know um for a wine to go bad? No? Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> Hold on a second. I gotta go. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Give me some of that popcorn. <laughs> okay. You know, I was telling you guys that whole popcorn thing. That's from my mom. My mom sent me this thing. And, um, you know, it's one of these deals. <clears throat> it's one of these guys with all the, you know, one of these things. So we're gonna we're gonna put this to the the, the test here. We're gonna do a little popcorn. Mhm. Mm Not the caramel one. I'm gonna do normal butter. That's butter and um. Butter and the cheese flavor, so we can try it. Oh yeah, that's really good. There's something about yeah, that's popcorn factory. There's something about that popcorn and you know what I mean. Something about popcorn and a sparkling that works really well. And you know, Vanessa actually said that <clears throat> the sparkling goes well, or champagne goes well with fried chicken. <laughs> so that's why I was like, tonight we're getting some Chick fil A. <laughs> yes, there is cheesy popcorn in there. How about that? I mean, you pair that, that is, yeah. Or, you know. Mm-hmm. Did we get a good cheers, by the way, guys? Did we get a good picture, by the way? I, I, I don't Do we get a good one? I don't know. I hope we did. Um, if you did take one, uh, just send them to me. Um, tag me in your stories so I can see them later. Cool? Oh, Miniature Missy, you had Chick-fil-A last night, see? 
I, just, I, I, this, I knew, I knew, I knew this reason we're good friends. See, so uh, you had um, Chick Fil A last night. I have a um, uh, just a good old Chick Fil A chicken sandwich coming, and I've got a and some uh, chicken nuggets too, because you know why not? And you got to get that that Chick Fil A um, sauce. And I just got a notification that it's gonna be here in a few minutes. So this is, a, a, a bl- <laughs> this is quick today. It's like a blessing and a curse because my food is getting here really quickly. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have to like leave you guys when the when it does come. Um, so we've we, we we've only got like a few minutes left tonight. Ashley, you had Chick-fil-A for lunch. <laughs> this is great. Extra pickles, Corey. Um, spicy chicken sandwich, no pickle. Add Colby Jack and lettuce with Chick-fil-A sauce and Polynesian. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is stuff I've never even heard of. This is wild. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Three hours away, Brando. Wait a minute. They were giving out free nuggets for cast members, Ashley? Is that just a Disney World thing? Or was that a... a, um... That's amazing. Yeah, Nathan, convince mom to go get some Chick-fil-A. Yeah. No Chick-fil-A, Samantha, wait. Yeah, Erica's like, wait, I want some free chicken nuggets. Wait, what? What's going on with the free free nuggets for, for cast members? Is this only a Florida thing? That is what we need to find out. Because we have cast members here from Disney World and Disneyland here. Okay. Oh, that's a Florida thing. Oh, make it blue. This is your last Unwind Wednesday. We're going to miss you. Free nuggets. Look at that Chick-fil-A. Free nuggets with a blue ID. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That is impressive. You guys wish we had, you, you had that here in Disneyland, right? So here's the deal. You got to move to Florida to get this deal, though, guys. <laughs> Transferring to Florida just for the free nuggets. I mean, you you can't work it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so you get discounts at Pizza Press. Interesting. Oh, so, hold on, guys. I got a call box coming through here. We got to hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, hello. Okay. Um. Yeah, that would be the food. The food! Okay. Guys, I gotta go because my food is here. So, I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna say bye. Ugh. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say bye to you now so I can go eat my dinner. Um, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Um, I'm gonna go enjoy some uh, some uh, some Chick Fil A, cause I deserve it. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good evening, and uh, I will see you this week. I'm sure. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You are awesome. 
Happy Wine Wednesday, everybody. Go get yourself some uh, bubbly like me. I'm going to go have some more of that now. Probably more of that Italian stuff. because Or the French stuff. I don't know. They're all good. Bye, guys. <laughs>